So just say your name and spell it. Leah Finnegan, A-L-E-A-H-F-I-N-N-E-G-A-N. So when did you uh, get into gymnastics? So I started gymnastics around two years old. I have three older sisters and they all did gymnastics and so it was more just whenever I was born, just kind of next one into the sport. Alrighty, and um, so you do it for a while. One thing I've always kind of gotten a little bit confused by, I guess, is the level system. Like how, how did you move up um, through that, I guess? Right, so each year you have like a gymnastics season and there's 10 levels in the JO program. And so, I mean, after you complete one level and like you do it successfully and then you have enough skills to train for the next one and then eventually you just keep moving forward. However, elite gymnastics runs just a little bit differently, so you have to qualify to elite gymnastics after JO or some people even skip level 10 maybe and do it before, but then it becomes like a completely different set of rules and regulations and skills essentially. And then most people, after they finish their elite, then they go to college for college gymnastics. Okay, and uh, for you, what was it? I guess it's a really tough question to ask, but like, how did it come to be where it's like, oh wow, I'm gonna do elite? So I had always wanted to do elite. In order to essentially go to the Olympics, you have to be an elite athlete and elite doing elite gymnastics. And so probably around like seventh grade is when I really started like getting serious about the sport and um, I was still level 10 at that time. I trained that for two years and then after I believe it was eighth grade then I started training for elite and then I went through the qualifications to do so. Okay and uh, what's it like training at such that really really high level like um, what's going into it and all I guess. What do you mean by going into it? Yeah I know I just realized that was a, um, I guess it's like what like the different preparation for elite compared to like level 10 and all like um it's mainly just <clears throat> excuse me the skill level and so in order to be elite you have to have more skills there's more difficulty and there's more requirements for your routines okay so um how exactly did you qualify for the 2019 u.s pan am team right so i had already been an elite for a year by then so they only for international competitions you have to be an elite and on the national team. So 2018, I didn't quite make the cut for national team. However, I was still invited to national team camps. That's where they take like the top athletes and elites and they go for about a week at whichever training facility it is at the time. And then they just kind of like watch to see how you're doing your gymnastics. They'll evaluate your routines. And then some camps are selection camps to where they'll be able to choose who goes to what meets from that camp. Okay, and so when did that selection happen? Because I know you didn't compete at the, uh, I don't think you competed at the Pan Am Games from what I remember. I did. You know? Okay, why do I do this to myself? That's even cut. So um, yeah, what was it like anyway, just going there? Um, the Pan Am Games was probably my favorite meet out of the international ones that I've been to just because it's like, it's kind of like a mini Olympics in its own way. There's every Olympic sport possible and then there's like, an athlete village, an athlete like dining, there's lots of like fun activities to do and you get to meet lots of people. Um, and really just like competing in that environment, the crowd there was like going crazy in the audience and um, there was just a lot of like, there was just a lot of cool things about it just because I got to meet so many different people. And then of course, uh, maybe help that we won gold right. there. And what was that <laughs> moment like, winning gold? It was cool just because, you know, like, well, that's obviously everyone shoots for gold always, but it's not necessarily a given. And so, like, you still got to be able to, like, hit the routine, get the score. Um, and just knowing that, like, our Pan Am team, like, we went through each event and, like, we hit. And so it was just a surreal feeling. Yeah. And so uh, then eventually, 2021, you leave Elite. Um, why exactly? Um, so after Elite Gymnastics, whenever you decide to be done with that, personally, I was going into college, so <laughs> I didn't have really any interest in continuing. You know, it's pretty common after like an, uh, an Olympic quad, quadranium, to be able to be done with elite, and so. Okay, so then uh, when did you commit to LSU? So I committed to LSU when I was in eighth grade. Why eighth grade? <laughs> um, I had known that there was about to be a rule change um, to where you weren't be able, you weren't 
able to talk to the coaches and so I knew I either had to do it like in that summer or I had to wait two years and you know it's you don't really know what's going to happen in two years and so essentially I'm um, like end of July I called Jay up and I told him I wanted to commit here it was just a verbal commit but it's still just like knowing that like you have a spot there and it's yours to take. And so uh, you come to LSU this year. What's been like some of the biggest adjustments you've had to make since coming to LSU compared to um, just where you were before, maybe like not just in training, but also just life in general? Right. I mean, college is very different from like high school and what you do before that. You know, you have more independence. You have to be able to take care of yourself more. Um, personally, like I really enjoyed my experience here so far. I like being able to like plan out what I'm about to do for each day and um, probably like the hardest thing was adjusting with like time management because you do have more free time like the training hours are less however there is a lot more things you have to do at the same time just because like college and college gymnastics is more time consuming I guess you could say. Yeah. So. Um what are some of the biggest differences, um, just in your experience, even though it's only been a year, between college gym and elite gym? Um, I think the biggest difference is that college is definitely a team sport, and elite is very much individually. So when you fall in elite, like it's on you, it's on yourself, it's not affecting anyone else around you. But then when you fall in college, then it's it's on the whole team. It's not like one person takes the blow for it, and also just like knowing that like we went together and we lose together rather than just by yourself like if you don't make it like then it's just on you. Alrighty. So when did you think about um, returning to Elite then? Um, I got a call from the Philippines around September I want to say and it was going to be a long process to be able to figure out you know like transferring countries because you know I was still in the USAG um, FIG requirement I guess you could say so there's a lot of like paperwork, there's a lot of phone calls, a lot of um, contracts you have to sign to be able to switch nationalities to be able to compete for that country. So I was a little bit unsure, especially because I knew it was going to be right after season and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel at that time. Um, but I told them I was open to it, but I also did tell them that college gymnastics came first and my season came first and then this was going to be something after. Alrighty. And uh, why did you even think of a return? Like, were they calling you, or was it like a more back and forth thing where it was like? Yeah, they called me and they said they gave me a list of meets that they were like, here you can go to any of these that you want. And I kind of looked at it and I knew this one was going to be right after season, so I knew it was probably going to be the easiest considering I had already been, you know, training this whole year. Um, and I also did tell them that it was a, more so like a one and done thing. I would just kind of, you know, like take it and like see how it goes and then, you know, just kind of go from there. So nothing after this is set, but I knew that it was something that I wanted to do in the back of my head, but there was a lot of variables that it depended on. Um, and I guess you also had to factor in just like it's more difficult. Not right. That <laughs> yes. Uh, so. I guess you mentioned like there's so much paperwork from changing uh, all of that. About how long did that take? It was a very long process up until like I'm still having to like turn in documents for them. Like now I had to do one last night actually. Um, it's just a lot to be able to because like you, there's a lot of stuff that you have to do to be able to like switch countries because it's like it's a really big thing to like compete on behalf of a country and so it's a lot trying to navigate. So when was it like, okay, I'm dead set, I'm going to do this? When did you finally, when was it like, okay, 100% on this? Um, it was probably like mid to late season. I want to say like probably like right after SECs. Like I kind of, like we've had like exchange contact um, this entire year, but um, I just, I knew that like how my body was feeling and that like I think I I felt okay enough to be able to like push that extra month and so I think probably around that time. Alrighty, so then you decide to do this, then you're also a college student and this is taking place during finals week. What do you have to, what did you have to do with uh, the university to make sure everything was okay? Right, so I actually sent, um, I sent a message to like the Philippine like, um, like the heads and the associations of it and I was like hey like the week that I leave is actually finals week and so I asked them if they could send 
me a letter, like an official letter, to be able to send to my professors to be able to take all of my finals early. Okay, and uh, I, was it like a lot of it, or was it was it really simple? Or fairly, I think my professors are very understanding and knew when they read the email, they were like, "Oh, like this is legit." And so, um, yes. they're it was very helpful for them helping me kind of figure out what's going to happen for that last week. So, um, what's the process of actually getting into like? going from, okay, I need to do this, this, and this, to, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm trying to figure out a way to make this make sense. Because when we had talked, like yesterday, one of the things you had mentioned was, okay, well, first I'm just messing around seeing what I have, and then I have to show that off, and then eventually I'll know what I'm doing. So, I don't know, kind of explain that process or something. Um, I mean, it, it's just kind of like a game of see what sticks or see what doesn't, because like, you do have to look at the like requirements because each apparatus has a certain requirement that they have. So you have to have like different skills. There's like it's lots of different rules. Um, and so I was just kind of like playing around, like see what works. Like I said earlier, and then like at the end of the day, you just have to think of like, okay, what can you hit all the time? So. Alrighty. Um, I guess one of the biggest questions I've had is just this, like. There's more to it than just you going on an international stage. It's the fact that there's a lot of people, from what I've been reading and all, that it's like this is a really big deal, especially for pe for young girls, young gymnasts in the Philippines. Like, if you actually have a chance to think about like that impact that you're having, and like the fact that you're going to have such a positive impact on so many people that you've never even met and probably right. may never be able to. Right. I mean, I'm really grateful for this opportunity because, like. I have like read some things that like this is like this is great for not only the Philippines but also like their gymnastics program as well just because like they're not like obviously like they're not like the best country in the world at gymnastics but I want to be able to do whatever I can to help them out.